Today, guys, we're going to do an uh, EGR delete kit on Chris's 2015 F350 with a 6.7 power stroke. And there is a key difference here in both the 2011 and 2013, or 2011 to 2014, and then 15 and up, I would assume. But let's call it 15 to 16 since that's what the kit says. Well, anyway, we have a kit here for a 2011 to 13 truck that comes with this hose. This is the difference. Um, and it, Otherwise, we have all the block off plates. This is this kit's from DK Engine Parts, who uh, we've just been informed doesn't really make these too much anymore. But anyway, we got all the kits to block off the EGR ports and then a hose to loop the system to get the coolant that would have been in the EGR system to stay in the motor. We ended up with the wrong kit since Chris's truck is a 15. As you can see, it's got this molded hose with push connect ends. And this is listed for a 15 to 16 power stroke. And then this kit is 11 to 14. It comes with the straight hose with the normal ends on it. So we're going to do a little like switching around to make it work because we have a plan. All right, so the first thing you want to do is just disconnect the batteries. There's a lot of stuff that is powered on this truck and you want to have them unpowered, especially in the EGR. When I unhooked the battery, the EGR solenoid went to a rest position, which is, I'm assuming, important for later on. Uh, anyway, and then we have this whole mess of cooling lines. So disconnect your batteries, take off your air intake, whatever that may be, and drain the cooling system and you're ready to begin. Which these trucks take a lot of coolant, so have a lot of buckets ready. So every, everything at this point comes apart without tools, uh, except for your air intake. If you have a factory air box, it's, there's a bunch of bolts over here, and then the air box just lifts out, and then there's a bolt over here for the resonator assembly in your air intake. This truck was equipped with a cold air intake, so we just undid that uh, a little bit easier than doing the factory intake. And then from there on, it has you start removing the EGR. So the EGR for you that don't, or for people that don't know, is the exhaust gas recirculation system on a motor. And on diesels, it's put on to help control emissions, and is probably the first thing that gets deleted on any truck that has it. Uh, Cummins, Power Stroke, Duramax, they all have it. They all get deleted. So this is your EGR unit here. Can you still see good? Yeah, you're good. It's this big, huge thing. I'll draw an outline. It goes underneath the firewall a little bit and then back around. It's like this long by this wide and this deep. It's a pretty big unit. What essentially it does is it uses antifreeze to help cool the gas that's being recirculated. And uh, unfortunately, it is a common failure, especially on earlier power strokes. Uh, on this one, it's not so much a failure point, but it does increase horsepower when you get rid of it. And a lot of tuners are set up for it. So anyway, what you want to do is undo all these push connects lines. There's two right on top of the EGR itself, and one that's kind of next to the intake plenum over here. So, and they're just push connects. So the first thing you want to do is uh, take the rubber, the little rubber hose off the top of the inside push connect, and that comes over here. And then the other end of it goes to the front of the EGR cooler right here. And I had these pre disassembled for this video so we could make it a little faster. These push connects can be a bear. You just got to reach your fingers in there, get the right angle, and wiggle them out. Uh, if you have a truck that's got really corroded uh, or corroded ends here, it could make it harder. Luckily, we were fortunate enough. And uh, once you get rid of all these, you can, or once you get these unhooked, you can just get rid of them or set them off to the side, I should say. In our conversion here, this is where we ran into an issue. Since we have a kit for a 2011 to 2013 truck. Uh, we didn't get the right hose to go from this heater line here that would go back around to your heater core and then also have the hookup for this little line that we disconnected earlier that would go there. So what we're going to do is because we just need to get this to the heater core, we have the right size push connect right here. So I'm just going to reroute this so it clips right here. And then instead of teeing the line here like they usually have you do, we're going to take it off right here and then put these two lines together so it goes straight to the expansion tank. And I, I'm fairly certain that that's not going to cause any issues since this just provided coolant to here anyway and there was no loop. So uh, that's going to be our way to get around that. So if you ended up accidentally buying the wrong kit, this is a possible solution for you. Uh, if not, there's no harm in returning it and getting the right kit. So now that we've got all of these coolant line hooks up or coolant lines unhooked, there's three large ones and then two little ones, one here and one that would be at the top of this hose that we talked about a minute ago. 
uh, what you want to do is get these crossover pipes out and this is this one comes from the manifold or the back side of the head technically and then up to the EGR and this one goes out into your intake so you want to take these off which they are very small eight millimeter headed bolts and they like to break if you ask anybody that's done this before, they break a lot, especially the ones down on the manifold. So what you wanna do is coat them in penetrating oil or grease, whatever you have, and be careful and gentle, and just work them out slowly and steadily. And uh, then that will avoid you a bunch of time trying to extract these bolts after they snap. We got all our crossover pipes off, and uh, this sensor, here is an EGT probe. It measures the exhaust gas temperature and it went in the pipe that goes from the EGR to your intake. And in your block off kit, you're gonna get a plate that is threaded for this and it has to go in that plate. And it actually goes right down there in the manifold. If you can see. Yep, we got it. Yep, and then, so once you get all of those up pipes off, you got your cooling lines off, there's a bracket you have to take off to undo this assembly. It sits right there. Uh, this is what the bracket looks like when it's bolted in it's bolted in about like this and then this is clipped into it you just unclip this vacuum harness here and leave it all together just take it off the bracket and then unhook the line from this actuator that's all you got to do and then other than that there's one electrical plug here that was right there you, you got to unplug that too once you get all of that unplugged and you got your uh, cooling lines done you gotta go through, there's two bolts on the front that hold this harness for the PCM. And then there's seven bolts around the outside, which we will, uh, we'll, when we get this out, we'll show you guys where they are. But around the perimeter of this, there are seven bolts. A trick that I had to do, I tried everything, but I ended up, there's a big bracket that holds the PCM in. Uh, I wish we had filmed that a little bit, uh, but essentially it's just two 10 millimeter nuts there and there and you undo the bracket and then unclip the harness from the bracket and then you can unplug all the connectors from your PCM and then remove the bracket and then remove the PCM. I did not have to take the battery out, I didn't have to do anything fancy, I just wiggled it right out. Uh, and once you get that out, it gives you access to this back bolt that's in this rear corner. And now that we have all of those bolts out and all the uh, crossover tubes disconnected and our cooling lines disconnected and the electrical disconnected, which is only one plug, and then this vacuum harness disconnected, we have ourselves an EGR that's loose. And we're going to wiggle it right out of here. Once you get that out, it opens up all sorts of room in here. And if you got a good, or a good EGR delete kit, it actually comes with brackets to reattach all this stuff. And I believe it comes with a vacuum cap for this solenoid here. But uh, we'll, when we get into that and get the kit out, we'll look at it more. You have one here, one here, and one here, which this one here comes out with that little black bracket we showed you that had the vacuum assembly on it with all the vacuum lines. And then you have one here, one here, one here, and one in the back. And this back one's the one you have to undo the PCM for. Everything else I did with a ratchet and uh, just some extensions and some swivels. Uh, nothing too crazy. And uh, now that we got the EGR out, we're ready to actually put the delete kit in. Alrighty guys, so when we got our EGR cooler out, we had to move this vacuum solenoid and its accompanying harness. So the kit we got did come with a vacuum cap. But what I want to show you is in a couple things I saw online and in our kit, it wants you to just put the uh, cap right here, which this line would have gone to your EGR solenoid, the vacuum solenoid, it's the big black round thing that had an arm in it. Um, but if you want to reduce clutter, and here at DBO we're all about that, uh, you can follow this, this whole assembly, all it is is just a solenoid that lets vacuum in from another port, and then uh, this solenoid just goes on and off at certain rates to let vacuum into our solenoid. So you can just follow this line all the way down and around the front of the motor. And if you look right over here on your intake, and this is on a 2015 truck. I need to, I guess, be a little specific about that. A lot of the stuff we're doing is specific to a 2015. Unfortunately, there is not a lot of information about this model year truck and doing an EGR delete on the internet. A lot of it covers the 2011 to 13. But on a 15, we can follow that line right to there, and that's where we're gonna put our vacuum cap. We're just gonna cap it right there, and then we can get rid of this whole line all the way down through. And then that's one less thing that clutters this engine bay. And we're also gonna undo this plastic bracket here that was bolted to the front of the EGR, 
it just helps hold the harness but uh, now that it's not bolted or anything it's just a big black plastic thing in the way and uh, we want this engine bay to look pretty sweet so uh, uh, we'll get back to that once I get all that done and then we'll go over the kit and the components and where they go and how they go alrighty guys so we have here a 2011 to 2013 uh, EGR delete kit for a 6.7 power stroke. This is from DK Engine Parts, which we kind of talked about at the beginning. And unfortunately, it was a mistake to have this kit because our truck is 2015, which we're going to show you a little trick to kind of get around that in case you do the same thing we do. Uh, but in the because of that situation, we are not going to use this. On a earlier 6.7, this would go from the top of your EGR, which is here, one of these two ports, and then it loops goes on there and loops down around to your degas container which is just you know Ford's fancy word for their overflow container off the radiator and then the kit comes with a series of block off plates these block off all of the ports that are left over from your crossover tubes this goes down at the lower one where we saw the bolts that always break but fortunately we didn't and also this has the threaded outlet in it for that sensor well, we showed you just a little bit earlier. And then this plate here goes up on your intake manifold, up on the top like this, and that just blocks off the other end. And then the other two ports went away with our EGR system that is now not on the motor. Uh, and then we have our union here, just a flare union. We'll, later on, we'll show you where that goes. Actually, we'll just do all that right now. So we, it comes with a flare union, two clamps, which would be for this hose, which we're not going to use, and then a sensor bracket, which I believe... We can't find any use for this on a 2015. So uh, if you guys know, please comment and tell us. Uh, if not, I'm sure this goes on a 2011 to 2013 truck somehow. Uh, and then we have our bolts for this kit. But what we're gonna show you real quick is these two pieces here. This is the vacuum cap we just mentioned, and then also this flare union. But let's take all these over the truck and we'll show you guys kind of where they go. All right, so here's our, our small kit here. So our vacuum cap, as we pointed down in before, I'll hold this out of the way, would have came from our vacuum assembly that was up here on top of the EGR and looped around. And it just needs to go right over here on this nipple. No prep is needed. All you got to do is just slide it on there, just like that. No big deal. Pretty easy. Lighting's poor, but you got it. Yep, you got the right idea. And then this guy here, so in the instructions, they have, unfortunately, the only instructions we could find were from uh, 2011 to 2013. Uh, it's supposed to go in this line here. So just to refresh your guys' memory, this end would have went to the line that was connected there with the fancy push connect fitting with the little nipple on the end, and then this went to the EGR. So what they want you to do originally, and if you have the correct kit for a 2015 truck, you're going to put this right here, like that, give you a good visual. You're going to hook this line to this line and undo these two clamps, uh, which you're going to have to source new clamps because I just realized our kit did not come with small clamps. Uh, or if you have the tool, you can recrimp these or whatever, what have you. Um, if you're like us, you're just going to get a good worm clamp that's small enough and tighten her down. Uh, but because we have the wrong kit and we didn't get the special hose that goes here and then down to the heater core line, what we're going to do is we're just going to take this whole assembly right out, which fed the EGR, and we're going to put our union right here from this line to this line. And all that's doing is connecting it from the degas bottle at the bottom all the way over to your actual like reservoir for the coolant. And then last but not least, we have our three plates that we talked about. The big long guy here goes right across on your EGR and you put the logo up and it's got divots in the back for these alignment dowels on that manifold. Get out of the light there. So that's gonna sit in there like that. And then we got all we got left are two plates. Your bottom plate, real thick guy, a uh, real thick guy here, has the threads for our EGT probe. And that's exhaust gas temperature we kind of talked about earlier. That's just going to go like that, and then it goes right down in there like that. If you want to shine the light in there. Yep, we got it. And then our last plate, with a fancy logo, goes right here on the top of the intake manifold. And uh, goes just like that, and that seals off that hole. Once we get all these on, we'll uh, show you guys what it looks like all installed, and I'll wash up some of this stuff. Anyway, so guys, we just finished up our EGR delete kit on Chris's 6.7 Power Stroke. It's 2015. Yeah, this is Chris right here. Um, so, all in all, it went pretty good. We went through the video on kind of how everything comes apart and how it all goes back together. Here's what it looks like all installed. 
We got our block off plate for the EGR coolant assembly. And then we got a block off plate for the exhaust manifold that has our EGT Pro bung in it and its all installed. And then our plate up here for the intake manifold port that would have had the crossover too. And then we also, to kind of show you guys what we did, being that this is a 2015 and we had a 2011 to 2013 kit, uh, we had to do this here. We, we spliced these lines together, which this goes down to your degas bottle and then over to the overflow container down that side. And then another thing that we did, so in a 2015 kit, you would have had the correct hose here that has the nipple on it. And then you would have just ran this just like the instructions say and then hooked it up right there. But uh, because we accidentally got the wrong kit and these guys got to leave for Texas here soon, uh, what we did is we took our heater core line and hooked it up directly. The push connects exactly the same. It hooks right on. You don't need to do anything fancy. The only thing that I do recommend is this is factory routed back underneath and then back. If you try to jam this on there with it routed like that, you're going to push it right into the uh, up pipe for the turbo, and, which is not good for these kind of lines. It's just it, it, eventually you're going to have a problem. Uh, actually, it's not. Yeah, it is a part of the up pipe back there. All I did is I just routed it under this harness and looped it around so it was pointed forward. That way, it's not any near anything hot. It's not anything sharp. Uh, should last a good long time. And now this truck's ready to do some burnies. Uh, so this is our first diesel video we've done. Uh, it's a. We'd like to get into it a little bit more. We, we're do about doing anything performance. We like making shit go fast. Uh, if you guys liked it, like, comment, subscribe. If you didn't like it, like, comment, subscribe. Tell us what we did wrong. Um, and we'll let you know how our modifications did, being that this is the older kit for the newer truck.